The 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics was just awarded to these three scientists for their research in quantum mechanics, and in particular on their work on entangled states. What is an entangled state, and why did Albert Einstein himself call it a spooky action at a distance? In quantum mechanics, we tend to represent the states of particles with these complex vectors. For instance, we could have particle one, which could have, let's say, two states, A1 or A2. In practice, this could represent a physical quantity, such as the spin of a particle. If we're looking at the system as a whole, we could say that we could have something like particle one being in state one, but then also particle two being in state B1. In a combined system, we can think of particle one being in state A1 and particle B being in state B1. In quantum mechanics, we have a cool symbol to represent this, and this is the tensor product. You can't think of it as a way of multiplying these complex vectors. In quantum mechanics, though, it is not a given that particle one is going to be in state A1 because there will be some probability that the particle could be in state two. The way we would write this is as follows. We assign each of the states a coefficient which is directly linked to the probability of the particle being in state one. And then to that, we're going to add the probability, let's call it alpha two, of being in state two. And let's put in some brackets over here. And then we can have a tensor product with the probability of particle two being in those two states. So let's just call it beta one will be the probability of being in the state B one plus some coefficient, call it beta two times the state, which is gonna be B two. We can expand these brackets almost with ordinary multiplication. So let's do this. What we're gonna get is alpha one times B one. So alpha one, beta one. And then we're gonna get A one cross B one. So A one cross B one. This here is a state plus alpha one, beta two. And then we have A one cross B2 plus alpha 2 and then we're going to get beta 1 and then we're going to get this state which is A2 then tensor product applied by B1 and the final one will be this one times this one so it's going to be alpha 2 beta 2 A2 tensor product B2. And this here is the most general state that we can write. Let's consider a more fun state though. This here is another possibility and that is particle one being in a state A1 and particle B being in state one or particle one being in state two and particle two being in state two. And here is where the spooky bit of quantum entanglement really comes in. This general state we could have written as a term which corresponds to whatever particle one is doing and a term that corresponds to whatever particle two is doing. Is it possible to write this state in terms of whatever particle one is doing and then multiply by whatever particle two is doing. Let's think about this in terms of coefficients. If this is true, then this means that those two coefficients, alpha one and beta one, will have to equal to one. So we can say that alpha one times beta one will be equal to one. And if this term here is true, then let's find the coefficient. So A2, B2, which is this one. So alpha two times beta two will also equal to one. 
because in this state we can only have this or that, those two coefficients, alpha 1, beta 2, so alpha 1, beta 2, will have to equal to 0, and this state here, alpha 2, beta 1, will also have to equal to 0. This here is a contradiction. Look at this. Alpha 1, beta 2 equals to 0. This means that either alpha 1 will be 0, in which case this coefficient's got to be 0 as well, or if beta 2 is equal to 0, then this coefficient here will have to be equal to 0. So this means that it's completely impossible to represent this state as something that is happening to particle 1 and something separate that is happening to particle 2, i.e. those two states are completely entangled. And you can have these crazy experiments in which you separate two particles and then you make a measurement on one instantly changing the state of the other and it doesn't really matter where it is it could be 10,000 kilometers away it could be on the other side of the universe those two states are fully interlinked due to the laws of quantum mechanics as soon as this was discovered people were convinced that this violates the laws of special relativity seemingly able to transfer information faster than the speed of light because the wave collapse in quantum mechanics is instantaneous this is actually not the case. Quantum entanglement does not violate the laws of special relativity. If you enjoyed this video, you will really enjoy this one in which we look at a classical paradox which is super strange in special relativity and this video is just over here.